Hi everyone. Thank you for coming uh, once more to Fosdem for a new open media room. Uh, this year we start with probably the most crowded talk uh, every year. That's Normatis Camp talk on VLC. This year we we'll talk about VLC 4.0. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, let's start with the Do you guys hear me? Okay, thanks for coming. Uh, some of you have already seen part of it. Um, this talk is a continuation from last year where I came here and I said, this is what we're going to do. And this is the following talk, this is what we've done. Um, I'm sorry, the slides are a bit uh, tricky. So just a few stuff about VLC 3.0. Um, it was veterinary, 18,000 commits on the core and around 3,000 on each of the ports. Um, it was a bit long to come, but it was very good because we refactored the infrastructure and the architecture so that mobile uh, and uh, desktop had the same sharing uh, core, especially we activated hardware decoding absolutely everywhere. Uh, quite a strong release, quite difficult to stabilize because of hardware decoding and drivers who are shitty. Um, and for once, it's not only on Linux, but they are shitty everywhere, um, especially on Windows 10. Um, Highlights of Windows VLC 3 was hardware decoding, 360 video, um, common code base, 10 bits, the early parts of HDR, uh, 12 bits, uh, HTTP2, and correct uh, path through audio uh, and not the usual hack we've been talking in the last 10 years on VLC that we finally fixed. Um, a bit on of uh, Wayland and a new subtitle stack. Okay. Um, download numbers. Hello? Yeah, sorry. The Projector is a bit, um, yes. Uh, we've already done more than 200 million downloads on our website. So, of course, it's the usual outside of Linux distribution, outside of Android, iOS, outside of uh, download.com and other websites that improve the experience by adding toolbars. Um, <laughs> um, and that's uh, 89 million on our website for the 3.04, which was the time, the one who stayed six months on our website. Yes, so uh, the core of the talk is about VLC 4.0. Um, this is exactly the slide I was last year. If you want to troll me, you can go and check on the website from last year. This is taken, copied uh, from it. So the next release is called Otto Schreck, with a vampire photograph from uh, this world. Um, and basically, so I said new playlist, media library, work on the interface, new video output architecture, VR 3D, and dumping old platform. And basically we've done almost everything of it. Uh, new playlist, uh, clock, media library, interface, new video output, well, basically everything is done. So I'm going to present exactly what we've been doing. So first thing is um, in VLC 3.0, we had the 360 support, which is basically all those uh, videos. Um, and that you can use on a normal laptop and not by installing some very complex software to do that and works everywhere. You can touch, you can use your mic, you can use your keyboard and your mouse and move it around. Um, that is, of course, a query rectangular cube map projection. It's done in OpenGL everywhere except on Windows where it's using Direct3D. Uh, at the same time, we did also everything related to 3D audio, which is ambisonic. So we wrote an ambisonic uh, rendering and a binaural uh, rendering stack for, for the audio part. And that uh, works more or less in 3.0. In 4.0, though, uh, people have been asking us to, to go to the next step. And the next step is to support the VR headset. Um, because VR is almost dead now, or soon to be dead, that's the right time for us to actually uh, come <laughs> and take the market. Um, um, most, a lot of the work has been done uh, by the OpenHMD team who has been reverse engineered uh, all the headsets because uh, else you need to install a 250 megabytes uh, SDK and 200 megabytes uh, Unity to do anything on VR, which is horrible and annoying and doesn't work on Linux and doesn't work on Mac. Um, by directly discussing through the USB wire to activate all the features of the headsets, you can do that directly. So you will have a normal VLC, uh, you put the headset on and it just works. You don't have to do anything, not to have any, install anything. Um, and that works. Um, this is uh, us at the IBC uh, uh, day uh, show where we were uh, demoing uh, with people uh, coming and putting the headset and trying. Uh, I think it was like one Vive, one Oculus, one PSVR to show that it worked everywhere. Um, so this is going to be in, uh, in, uh, in VLC 3.0, um, uh, 4.0, sorry. Uh, and of course, support for, uh, will come on Android also. Um, we might 
merge, it's not completely sure about the 3D part, which is uh, everything related to the, all the NVIDIA glasses. But once you're doing VR, doing just stereo is quite easy. Input. Um, so we've done the work, well, they've done, uh, the, the work on the input manager. Um, the problem in the past is VLC had the playlist, and the playlist was doing absolutely everything, from managing the audio output to managing the video output, but also doing service discovery, browsing on UPnP, and so on. It was a monster, and it was never finished, because the people who worked on that basically left the project while in the middle of the re rework. And for the last 10 years, we've been like fighting against that. So we decided to rewrite a new uh, input manager, who's basically holding the input, uh, the inputs, and also holding the reference to the audio output and the video output. Um, this is um, quite important because that's uh, what is going to help us to, to get gapless, right? So you can have actual gapless in audio, maybe in video, whatever that means. But at least you have stuff that you will keep around while uh, moving uh, from one input to the next input. Um, gapless audio is something that people have been asking since I think before I joined the project, so that could be 2003, um, and we are going go to finally uh, uh, deliver that. Also, um, the libvlc, which is used by Android and iOS, and a lot of people who use VLC, like the phone on backend, um, also did not have the same playlist, had a different playlist, because it made so much sense to have different um, playlists and competing code. So all that is um, being merged, and with really separating the input, which is just knowing the next, the current, player, the current media, and the next one, and the playlist who's an actual playlist. And by an actual playlist, I mean something that is flat, you know, with one next and not the horrible tree um, in VLC playlist, which was amazing because, in fact, there was only one tree, but also, at the same time, a flat representation, which is, of course, a, an amazing design um, that n almost none of us ever understood correctly. So, um, and also, we are making that... Um, the same for the VLM, which is a multiple input for VLC, uh, for the libvlc, and for the main VLC. Uh, so that's going to uh, simplify a lot. And also, it has a nice feature, which is now we understand that code base. Um, it, it, it's uh, sad, but it's true that uh, in the VLC core, there used to be some stuff that we did not understand or had difficulty. Well, maybe except Remy, who, who knew about them, but anyone else couldn't. So now we understand more or less this code base. Clock, okay. Um, so the current clock of uh, VLC is based on the input PCR. Um, for those who don't know what PCR, a very simple way is basically having the clock of the encoder. So when the encoder, sorry for the people who are very precise, it's not exact, but basically the encoder when it codes give its own time and then you can synchronize on the time. Um, it is because VLC used to be just video land client and just a player for TS stream live. And you care a lot about that because you want to be in sync in your encoder because you're doing live. If you're getting too, too, um, too slow, then you're going to accelerate. And that's why you always see VLC resampling the audio um, or delaying some, some video frames. And people are annoyed because when you're basically playing a normal audio file, you don't care, right? I'm not playing the, 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 t the television that you used to uh, at the Ecole Centrale Paris when the project was started to play a TS stream. Um, and also, because of that was very focused on TS, we basically modify all our demuxes to fit this model, and it was not always a right idea. So um, the idea for 4.0 is to change that, so we went and, and, and destroyed the clock. And I think there was like a, a joke that no one dared touching the clock except uh, Mo and Sam. Uh, but this year we finally did it. So the idea uh, of the clock, the new clock, is to have a main clock um, and then in the core that is basically doing the timings. And then depending on the pluggable clock system, you're going to modify this monotonic clock given by the system in order to accelerate or not accelerate. And you're going... For example, you're going to be able to say, well, my master clock is going to be my audio because you're playing a video, a local file. Then your audio is the most annoying part because it has SPDIF and because you have a shitty driver that, can, that is, doesn't have the same clock as your system. And so this, you can say, well, this is now my master clock. Um, but for everything related to VSync or G-Sync or FreeSync or whatever the last AMD and NVIDIA marketing terms, you might, you might also want to basically have your master as your video output. Or if you are professional and using SDI, 
Maybe your SDA clock is better than all the other clocks and more important to be correct. So that's why basically you're basically asking which of the uh, clocks are the master clock and then it gives this uh, difference uh, to the main clock and this main clock is basically driving the others. And all the other outputs are the, for the slave uh, and are asking the core how to transfer the PTS to real time. Um, so this is going to help us because um, it's mostly going to give us, of course, no resampling all the time, better synchronization, vsync, and so on, but especially frame accuracy. Um, because basically, uh, uh, the, the, the old clock was around the, the input, right? And then in order to know what are we playing, then you have the whole pipelines and the codecs, which of course all of them are instantaneous, um, um, and video filter and video output. And of course, this happens in no time, right? Uh, well, no. Exactly. So the problem is that we, the clock was around there, then we had to basically estimate the delay of the PTS around it and then add that, which is a problem because that means that VLC was never completely frame accurate. Of course, it was usually one to two frames, but it's not completely frame accurate. Now that we move the clock to actual asking the, 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 the timestamp to the output, from the output, then we can be frame accurate and got those SMPTA. Uh, time, st time code and so on. I, I think a lot of those professional players from Panasonic and Sony uh, who are basically 2,000 euros each seat are going to be very unhappy about that uh, because I think we're going to kill their biggest uh, selling point. Okay, video output. Um, currently in VLC, basically we take the decoders, um, we take the frames from the output I ask him as the output, the video output, what do you support? And he's going to say, well, I only support i420 and v12. And then we went, we took the, we did a picture pool there, and then we went back uh, to the decoders and to all the filters. That makes a lot of sense in the 19th and in 2000s when your, your graphic card was a piece of shit, uh, and, uh, and you were using Xvideo that only supported one format. Now, most, almost all of them support Direct3D, OpenGL, shaders, and so on. So it makes less sense to block the whole pipeline from the output. And that's why we move from a pull model to a push model, where basically the decoder are pushing the frame to the next level, which is going to be the filters, who are going to, f to push it to a different filter and to a different filter until the, uh, the output. It makes it way easier to, to, um, to manage. It looks exactly how you ma we manage audio. Um, and also, it's going to uh, help for recycling the Vout when you move from one input to the next input because um, you might be able to, um, to keep the same surfaces and just add a filter. Um, and of course, we're working on more IGR. And when I mean we're working, I mean Les Placebo guys are working. Niklas, I don't know where you are. Thanks. Um, okay, media library. Um, so the media library, we have a new uh, C++, well, I'm saying new now for the last two years, but um, we have a new media library in C++ that has been uh, today used on the Android port of VLC. Um, this media library basically indexes what you have on your uh, phone, um, and now we're bringing that to iOS and Android, uh, to iOS and the desktop. Um, this is the tablet version of Android. Um, small technical details, it's in C++, it's backed by SQLite. Uh, it's quite simple and light compared to other media libraries. It will not do very, very complex stuff that you have on some media centers. Uh, it indexes audio and video, shows, playlists, and it co also index your UPnP shares, or DLNA, or SMB, or whatever you, maybe NFS for you guys, probably. Um, Okay, but having a media library brings a problem, which is we need to have a new UI. Um, people have been complaining on, of the UI of VLC since forever. Um, usually the UX is okay with VLC because, well, you didn't, don't interact with it. You double click on your video file. You do two modifications, just works. Um, however, the UI was, oh, it's too old and so on. Um, and also like GNOME 3, 4, um, Plasma 5 and Windows 10 have changed a lot the way we uh, have interfaces and people seem to like, not like VLC anymore. Um, so we are working on that. There are two main use cases for VLC. The first one is to play from Explorer, Finder, Nautilus, or whatever you want. Um, Dolphin, of course, for the KDP folks. Um, and basically, you don't care. Right? You just want the media player. right? Or if you're on command line, you just want to see VLC and just play. And no, no, no. 
But there are other pe lots of people who are basically using VLC to play audio or to play TV shows and to do playlists and so on. And they, they work in the other way around. They launch VLC and then they open. Um, and that, uh, that's quite a more common use case that we, we thought it was. Um, around 50 people, 50% 50 use uh, this way of opening VLC. And for them, um, th we need a media library and we need a nicer UI. So what I'm going to show you is a screenshot. I don't think it's been shown uh, anywhere yet. Um, I'm go just going to, you to not scream. OK, so I'm sorry, guys uh, and girls. It's very technical. I'm going to show you a screenshot of UI. Do not worry. You can still use the common line, right? <laughs> okay. um, so most of the UI is down, down in QML, which is basically Qt5. Um, this is what we have currently, so there's a video player. You even have transparency at the bottom uh, of the controller. Wow, welcome to 2005. Uh, <laughs> but basically, that's what you expect, right? Um, and it, it fades, there is not much chrome around. Same for the playlist, that can be... And most of the people are just going to see that. Um, it doesn't, you don't see a menu, so the GNOME people are going to be happy. Um, I think we need still to remove some features so they are very happy, but um, we're getting there. Um, this is just like the grid view, right? So, so when you open, there is the video that you've been indexing. A lot of green videos and very interesting uh, uh, mirrors at the bottom, but I think you get the idea. And at the top, you have like music, video, network, and maybe internet radios and so on. Audio, well, you, you can have well, albums, artists, genres, tracks, you know, something. It's very simple, right? But just what people want. And when you click on a momentary laptop reason, one of the best album, of course, then it just opens a bit like Lollipop for the GNOME people. Uh, and you can basically click. And then you have the playlist uh, on the side. OK, um, so that you don't scream. The media library is optional. OK? Uh, so uh, we are not going to force people to index their drive. You can disable it. You can select which folders. And if you double click from your GNOME, Nautilus, or what's the name now? It's probably called files, uh, from your files or finder, it will not launch the media library, right? So it's just fast. And I, I think that 4.0 is going to be even faster to, to launch a movie than VLC 3.0. You sh I showed you without menus. Do not worry. You can activate the menus if you prefer menus, right? We have, we don't care. Uh, do what you want. If there is an option, we are not GNOME. Um, there will be some GNOME-specific and KDE-specific adaptation so that it looks like a GNOME application or a KDE application. Uh, that's very important. And yeah, if you care about CSD and SSD, which is client-side decoration and server-side decoration, we don't care, right? We will make it so that it looks native on your platform and on your own religion. We don't care. Uh, it's going to work on Linux on Wayland X11, on Direct3D 9 for the people who are still on Windows 7, and 11 for people who are on Windows 10. Those are mockups for the Mac UI, who are a bit less uh, advanced than the, than the Linux UI. Um, and this is the UI uh, for the next version of iOS, who takes the same ideas and the same media library. Yes, um, more features. Uh, in VLC 4.0, Wayland actually works. <laughs> Um, the screenshots you've seen uh, were uh, taken on Wayland. Um, as in 3.0, we had Chromecast. People broke, break our balls for two years about that. Uh, we are adding UPnP rendering, so any smart TV, uh, anything that just understands UPnP uh, as a client can be basically sent in the same way. It's going to be the same UI because no one cares if you're using Chromecast or UPnP rendering. Um, and, of course, we're going to have AirPlay, which is basically AirPlay 1, to do exactly the same. And same, you don't care whether it, what protocol it's underlining. Uh, we added a lot of uh, other support, like Dash WebM, TTML subtitles, images, which is horrible, uh, AV1 encoding. We have a VP, v, Web VTT encoders, uh, special for Derek, of course. Um, we move the SDI output from a video output to stream output, so we are going to support way more stuff on SDI. We support SMB v2 and 3, thanks to uh, uh, a new library. And we support the RISC protocol in and out. On Android? On Android? Which? SMB. Yes, and iOS. Um, 
And I promised that we were going to drop platforms. Uh, this is exactly what we did. So we are dropping XP and Vista. We are dropping macOS 10.7. I said that, sorry, I said that we would drop from 10.7 to 10.9. We're actually going to drop 10.10. .10. Uh, sorry for those who care. <laughs> and um, of course, on Linux, we're now going to deprecate everything related to uh, Xvideo, so you need OpenGL. Uh, Android, well, we're going to drop 2.2, .2, um, 2.3, and 3.0, and 4.1, and so on. Uh, we will require Android 4.2 uh, for that. And iOS 7, 8, 9, maybe 10. And I have three seconds left, so I've got five minutes for questions. Yes. Questions? Uh, any questions? Any clever question? At some point, I tried to capture, you know, old VHS video from a capture card, and it was quite horrible and hard to use the UI to understand exactly what to do from a, you know, non-professional person. Yeah, yeah. Is uh, this easier now? Uh, it's one of the things. Um, so. One of the parts with a new media library is that you're going to be able to, well, on the network stream, it's basically going to define and find all your network shares, but it's also be going to show you all the capture device directly there, and so you can click, and it's going to be easier to do than the horrible Control-C capture, open capture, that is very difficult to use. So, yes. Coming, coming. You need two mics. Sorry. I got two. There is one for the recording and one for the room. Uh, I have a 360 camera. Yes, uh, which one? Uh, the Theta? Uh, no, it's a uh, $100 one. Uh, very Chinese cheap. one, okay, sure. Um, yeah, indeed. <laughs> uh, it makes a files with uh, two rounds uh, video, one yes. for uh, each lens. Uh, can VLC uh, no. transform that? No. No, uh, we cannot because we don't have such cameras, so please give us a camera and explain how to do that. Because it's basically two two hemispheres, and yeah. there is an overlap. And then there is metadata in your file to tell us how to do the overlap. But we've been asking people to give us the file so we can look at the metadata, and no one gives us the file. So please keep us on contact, and we will support that. Right. Because it's absolutely trivial to do. Thanks. Other questions? I don't eat people. Ask questions. Well, only in the morning. Would you like to get uh, cameras donated? Yes. Uh, I would like uh, cameras, I would like any old SDI equipment. I need old equipment uh, because it's always useful for, to people, for us to, to support it. So yes, please, please give us hardware. I, I also take uh, old phones, old Android phones, old iOS phones, uh, everything that is old except um, your dad. <laughs> Uh, you mentioned AGR support uh, for from VLC, but is it on all platforms? Because as far as I know, Linux does not support this. Yes, so it's not. Yeah. Um, so in, in VLC 3.0, but mostly in 4.0, we got two modes. The first mode is that your platform does not suck and gives us a way to actually control the uh, uh, AGR metadata. Uh, and so we talk to the video output and we send that. Um, my understanding is that um, so far it works fine on Windows 10, for some definition of fine, uh, because you're on Windows. Um, it works fine on Android, uh, especially the NVIDIA Shield, basically. Um, on Linux, I understood that in Wayland there is a, a potential support with some Wayland extension, but I think it's so-so. So as soon as there is a way to do that so-so, and some people from Wayland help tell us what to do, we will support that directly. Um, in all the other cases, um, which is uh, Mac OS, iOS, um, old Linux, and old Windows, we basically tone map using uh, libplacebo to do the tone mapping. There is like 20 different algorithms, uh, which are of course not documented in VLC, uh, but we should pick uh, the right one by default. Um, on Mac OS, when we are going to move to uh, Vilcan output, we will use a uh, molten VK to be able to activate AGR on Mac OS and on iOS. But my understanding is that on Mac OS and iOS, it only works with internal screen, not external screen. And on X11, I think it's dead, so 
not going to happen. But if there are some people on Wayland, we are very uh, welcome and we can discuss with them, really. There was a question here. Um, why do you need an old Android phones if you don't?